It is one of the most highly anticipated national semifinal games ever. Kentucky and Massachusetts. They met earlier this season. Massachusetts beat them. But Syracuse awaits the winner. The Orangemen with an eight-point victory over Mississippi State, all set for Monday night to take on the winner of this battle. Jim Nance, welcome back to the Final Four. UMass lost only one time this season, ended the regular season final poll, ranked number one in the country, again beat Kentucky, yet the Wildcats are favored here at the Final Four. One of the reasons why the way Kentucky has been playing in the NCAA tournaments, they have been clawing indeed twice. They've been over 100 points, averaging over 94 a game. They have mauled their opponents by a margin of over 28 field goal percentage, over 50%. I mean, they are red hot, Billy Packer, but that has happened before for Kentucky. It has, and it's not ancient history, Jim. 1993, Kentucky came into the Final Four as a number one seed, had blown out everybody up to that point, but they were the one number one that didn't make it to the final game. Got knocked off by Michigan. This should be a great one. It should be. Kentucky and UMass coming up when we return to the Meadowlands in New Jersey. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Meadowlands for tonight's NCAA national semifinal game between the Kentucky Wildcats and the Massachusetts Minutemen. Now, let's meet the starting lineup. For Kentucky, at forward, a 6'4 junior from Louisville, Kentucky, number 23, Derek Anderson. For Massachusetts, at forward, a 6'7 senior from Bronx, New York, number 3, Dana Dinkle. Forward, a 6'8 sophomore from Chicago, Illinois, number 24, Antoine Walker. For Massachusetts, is forward, a 6'6 senior from Baltimore, Maryland, number 4, Dante Brown. For Kentucky, at center, a 6'10 senior from Evansville, Indiana, number 40, Walter McCartney. Massachusetts at center, a 6'11 junior from Hartford, Connecticut, number 21, Marcus Camby. For Kentucky at guard, a 6'1 senior from Brownsville, Tennessee, number 00, Tony Dell. For Massachusetts at guard, a 6'2 junior from Toa Alta, Puerto Rico, number 12, Edgar Padilla. Kentucky at guard, a 6'2 junior from Lebanon, Kentucky, number 25, Anthony Adams. For Massachusetts at guard, a 6'3 junior from Boston, Massachusetts, number 24, Amado Travieso. The coaches for Kentucky in the seventh season, Rick Pitino. For Massachusetts in his eighth season, John Calipari. Billy Packer, it's time to bring up the Packer points for game two. Well, Jim, these are so important, the guard combination. When you play Kentucky, you've got to have great guards to go against them, and without question, UMass does it, but Dean and Treviso, WSO, two of the best in the country. The long blue line, we're talking about that Kentucky bench, they come in to this uh, semifinal championship with 104 points off the bench. Tremendous, best in the country. Perimeter power, Kentucky is shooting 47%, not from inside, from three-point range. Terrific outside shooting team. The double-down factor, so tough to double down against Marcus Camby because he's such a versatile performer, but Kentucky will try to do it anytime he touches the ball with his back to the basket. It's been 17 weeks and 65 combined games since these two met at the end of November. Carmelo Traviasso said to this man, Tony Delk of Kentucky, as the two teams exited the floor, we'll see you guys again down the road. That's what he said to Tony Delk. And here they are, playing for the right to meet Syracuse Monday night for the national championship. Ed Hightower, Tom Rucker, Michael Kitts, the officials. 
Jim, a lot's changed from that game, but one thing that hasn't changed, Kentucky scored 32 points off the bench that night. UMass, zero. But UMass still came out with a victory. UMass won the game by 10. Had big leads in that ball game, but Kentucky battled back with outstanding outside shooting power. But in my estimation, Kentucky has been has done more to change the way it plays since that game than has UMass, and that may balance things off a little bit. Hamby controls it, and UMass will set up first. And it is McCarty on Camby down inside to get a lot of help from Walker. But Dia way too strong, but off Kentucky. Underrated backcourt, underrated forwards. Dr. Bright, Dana Dingle. You don't hardly ever hear about them on this ball club, but they get it done. A lot of experience in that position. Hot topic this week has been the UMass guards. Can be shot, partially deflected, and no double down. McCarty was, McCarty was with him all by himself. Walker looked like he'd go in to end. McCarty three-pointer. And Bright pulls down the board. Both teams a little nervous, Jim. You said so? I am watching them. Yeah. All the build-up. I'm yeah. sure they are, too. It had to affect them a little bit. It'll take them a while. You know, you don't see a lot of kids with sweats out there. You notice it? They're all very dry, kind of like a big boxing match in which the heavyweight champ comes out without a sweat. Very surprising. You don't like that? No, I don't. I think uh, normally teams should be sweating by now. Canby trying to get it right back. Good weak side help by Anderson. Walker's pass though, throw away, turned over to the Minutemen. Matter of fact, Jim, I don't know if I've ever seen that in a big ball game before. You don't see one guy out there. Looks like they all just came out of the shower and toweled off. All right, Weeks comes in, Tyrone Weeks for Camby. Just trying to slow things down. John Calipari wants to get a look to see how Kentucky's playing. Let Camby get a quick breath. Weeks is going to go in there to bang for a while. Those forwards are up, are very underrated. We're talking about experienced players there. They've won a lot of basketball games. Tevye, so he's playing against Delk and doing a little bit too much body in with him there. Got to give him room to maneuver. Tony loves to rub off those screens. Straight man to man here. Weeks on Walker, and he has really pounded him with his upper body. That foul was called on Dante Bright. So Kentucky looking for its first points, almost two minutes into the game. Tony Dell, who else? Rattles up, McCarty's ball way too strong. And Bright with the board. You can see Mass trying to force the ball up quickly and then get the swing. Weeks. Nothing there, wise decision, get it back out. Bright's got a lot of power on Anderson. Weeks hustling, Hightower joins him on the floor, backed him in. Weeks has a lot of problems with his foot. See Camby coming right back into the ball game. Little subtle move by John Calipari, trying to get his star settled down. Look, he tells Weeks, that's exactly what I wanted you to do, gives him a little Slap it to the hands. Camby comes back in, settles him down, like you say, and now they double him up this time. Camby talked to me yesterday, Marcus did, and said, when it comes into me and they double, I'm gonna dish it out in a hurry. Won't get caught in what happened to Tim Duncan last week. Dell smartly knocked the ball off of Travieso, so it's Kentucky ball as McCarty almost threw it away for a second time. Well, Jim, it, is it the SEC fumbleitis today? I mean, some ill-advised passes, and there's the first thing it touched out of bounds was the Massachusetts player, so a good call. Just 2 nothing, UMass. Now it's Cambion Walker. 
40 into the game. And tell Anderson. That's oh, Canby. a foul on Canby. Just reached his hand up from underneath. Now, normally, you don't get called for a foul like that when you come up underneath the ball. It's when you chop down on the top that it costs you. John Calipari making some changes quickly here. And they bring Weeks back in. Lights out. Epps for the first two of the game for Kentucky. Right out of bounds play, thrown right over the top. Here's the pressure. You've got to score to put the full court pressure on. First time Kentucky really gets an opportunity to do it. That ball deflected. Kentucky steals it. Behind the back. Nope. And one. Johnny Iso trying to throw the ball over Walker. Now, Jim, we showed it on the coach's edge why this press is so effective. You run into a double team, as we'll see right here, but the double team is a man who's six foot eight. Not a backcourt six foot two performer. And Delk, who can get up in the air, really makes it difficult to throw over the top. There you can see it. Delk's long arms, beautiful passing by Walker. He's one of the best interior passing big men in the country. And here's the press. Travieso called for the foul and a 5 2 Kentucky lead. It's time they break it. Canby has not had an opportunity really to operate offensively. This Kentucky defense. Really out tough on the ball. Here's Canby inside, and he might get it back with a three-point play of his own. Well, Jim, that's what I said that makes him so tough to double down against, because he's a maneuverable center. He doesn't post up and keep his feet in the same place. Now watch how much movement. There's a solid back screen. Canby's on the move. So by the time he touches the ball, it's too late for the defense to get over there to double it. You can see Walker, who would normally be doubling, he was occupied with Weeks. Nice job by Marcus Camby, the National Player of the Year. So McCarty, with the foul, goes to the bench and is replaced by Mark Pope. Camby ties it at five. Epps, who's having a sensational tournament. Dingle, almost, almost caught it. Almost caught me there in the assist turno turnover ratio. Epps has just been phenomenal. So far in the NCAA. Nine to one ratio for Epps. 27 assists, three turnovers is all during the NCAA tournament. In a fast pace up and down the court type game. I mean, that's just amazing. Wright has come back for UMass. Epps was falling away on the three. Pope follows it up. Camby rejects. This team sets all kinds of records in shot blocking. Good hit ahead. Travieso. He went until Duck went by. And UMass back in front by two. You think these two guards don't feel each other? They don't even have to see each other. They feel each other. Great sixth sense. These two roommates. Anderson, three-pointer. Kentucky rushing their shots. They can get much better shots than this. Gabby from the baseline. And Pope is making Camby run. You can see what Rick Pitino wants to do. Wear down that big man in the middle. Delk inside. Walker snapped the pass inside. Kentucky only two out of nine from the field. Jim, it's not the way they're shooting the ball. It's the shots that they're selecting to shoot is creating that bad percentage. Travieso picked up his second right there, Billy. And dealt to the line for two. Walker out, McCarty in. I make the same comment I made in the first game, Jim. If you don't have a long bench and your team is healthy, as this team is in University of Massachusetts, the one thing that can make you unhealthy is get a guy in foul trouble. So what they have to do now is they bring in a freshman, Charlton Clark, for Travieso, who goes out with the two. Well, you're, you're looking at a team who's starting lineup all average over 31 minutes a game. So you can see John Calipari having to go to that bench often and early, much more so than he normally would. Yeah, he already is. Tony Delk, the all-time leading scorer at the guard position in Kentucky school history. And this game marked his 100th consecutive start. Delk with five points. Kentucky and UMass exchanging punches early, all tied at seven.
UMass team got a surprise visitor in the locker room just before the game. Massachusetts Senator Ted Kennedy dropped in to wish them well. He told them that this is really a three-point situation. They've got the best team, the best player, and the best coach. He said he didn't really feel like giving them inspirational messages because he told me he feels that this team is really inspirational to everybody else. Back to you guys. All right, good stuff, Andrea, and UMass breaks the press. Padilla racing into the front court. This game tied at seven. Trying to swing the ball and then pump back in to do a little high-low here with Camby on the inside with Weeks. Tried to go the lob, had Delk down there. There's the swing. Camby got a good shot off. Players on him, but a clear look at the basket. Anderson driving it. For the board. Really a slashing player is Anderson, Jim. Everybody thought he was going to pull back up and dish out. That was a good play on his part. Padilla to Camby. Not a bad slashing move by Padilla. And very unselfish. He could have put it up himself. The other end, Delk missing on the drive. Camby wants somebody to come back. He'll take a little rest right here coming up the court. Here's where Kentucky may even on missed shots press a little bit, but make Camby have to work harder. Hits. And Two. McCarty pulls it down. Too quick a shot for Massachusetts. McCarty fakes and steps in, hits the two. And Camby a great defender in the paint, but at loss out there. Forcing them to go sideline. Doesn't want him to go out there with a solid screen and come up. Didn't want him there. Padilla, jumper. That's, Challenge why, that's why he didn't want him there. He tried to force him to go right. Kentucky racing, dealt, caught underneath, nowhere to go. And Kentucky's Anderson commits the foul. Look at this give up. Oh, just a great bounce pass. Camby sat right down there and caught it very nicely. Camby goes down, rolls, Padilla hits him perfectly. Look at him find that seam, Jim. You see how he sat down? Great fundamental basketball. The passer gets down on the floor. That means the ball on the bounce pass will come up softer into the hands. UMass has brought back Carmelo Travieso, and for the first time, Enos Norville. Kentucky, though, with Walker. Pulled down by Bright. Kentucky really putting the ball up quickly with nobody underneath the basket for the opportunity for offensive rebounds. It's kind of hurting them. Kentucky with subs also. Two freshmen, Ron Mercer, Wayne Turner, and the man guarding Shep Jeff Shepard a moment ago. That's a wild shot. Ball Shepard. UMass. No, oh, they say it was off. Off UMass. Kentucky ball. And Syracuse trying to figure out its opponent. But I'm trying to figure out how they got such good tickets. Who are those guys? <laughs> huh? Sitting there relaxing. I don't know if I've ever seen a team come back, Jim, and watch the second game. Have you? I don't recall. No. And they're back quickly. Hey, enjoy the final four. Absolutely. Walker. So far, Bright is having a great game off the defensive glass. Yeah, he has five rebounds. Inside. Another beautiful dish by Padilla. 13 9 minute men. Walker got the position and won. Padilla came through and he committed the foul. You can see without Camby's presence down on the low post defensively, UMass in some trouble. Here's the great crossover dribble. And you saw Donna Bright running that court so well, gets the pass. When you're playing with a guy like this, you know if you'll run the court, keep your eyes open, he'll get it to you. Can be returned. So shuttling in and out. Giving everyone a blow. And there's McCarty sitting for the second time. Jim, when I, I look back at that game in November 28th, Padilla played 39 minutes, Travieso 36, Camby 33, Dingle 31. So we already see John Calipari working against some of those minutes, trying to keep his team a little fresher. And this is why they're tough to press. Everybody can catch that ball on the run. Slams it home, another assist by Padilla. Padilla gets the assist, but Camby's the guy that made the catch in the pass to get it started. How many teams have big men that can go ahead and pass in the open floor like this? 
Now away from the ball. Here's another foul called against UMass. And it's going against Dingle. His first. Epps back in. Turner sits down. Here's Padilla again. Look at that bounce pass. Looking straight ahead. And how about the points? I said it was 32 to 0 in the first game, but the bench is starting to get a few here. Mercer taking it out. Padilla puts it in a place, though, where it's so easy to score. You know? <laughs> Shepard. Excellent leaper on the inside. X three pointer, rainbow three. And that ties the score at 15. Tim Epps has elevated his game in all areas in this NCAA tournament. Well, the ace have been quiet so far, hadn't really been open for many shots, hadn't touched it. And had to sit on the bench for a while with two fouls. He's got Shepard on him. Shepard, as I said, a great leaper, certainly matches him up physically. Actually, probably a better all-around athlete. What a screen, Camby sets Padilla. Look at hands out for Camby with the follow-up two. How about that beautiful soft touch there? Just laid it on the glass. Dingle off his hands. There goes underrated forwards beating the man to the ball. All right, we go to the break. Padilla missing on this one, but Camby in the right spot. You passed by two. Rick Pitino said the loss to UMass at the start of the year helped us more than any win. It taught us how to potentially become a great basketball team. Well, of course, the big move that they made was put Epps at the point yep. and put Delk out at the two guard. They made that a change immediately after that ball game. Freshman Ron Mercer, what a nice turnaround shot that is. As I said, all the guys can handle the ball. Dingle helps bring it up that time. We have our sixth tie. We are nine minutes into the game. Mercer playing backcourt defensively now on Padilla. Rough shot. They had two players on Camby, including Pope. There was that double down effect. You can see it's much more effective against Camby when he posts up as opposed to when he's moving and gets into the post. <laughs> Spins, lost control of it, and traveled in the process. Great job by Clark coming over for weak side defensive help. There was no place for McCarty to go, Jim. And there's McCarty. What a target to try to throw over against the press. There's a good target yes, to find is. also. Camby. Yep, you had a six foot six guy throwing to a six foot eleven guy. Tough pass here, but Bright's in the right spot. Leans in with the body. He's going to the line for a couple. He's always uh, known how to use that body ever since he played center in high school at Dunbar in Baltimore. Number one high school team in the country when he was in senior at Dunbar. Of course, a school that's uh, had a number of great players get into the Final Four. One meant the MVP, Reggie Williams, the MVP of the championship game when Georgetown won the national championship. They've had others through the years, too. Great players, that is. Reggie Lewis, Tyrone Bogues. He was a teammate, was bright, with Keith Booth, a cousin, played at Maryland this year, and also Michael Lloyd, formerly of Syracuse. Exactly who he would have been seeing in tomorrow's game had Michael stayed at Syracuse. If he gets there. If he gets there. That ball, last touched by Dingle. You see, Massachusetts not looking to pick up full court in the same intensity as is Kentucky, but changing things around a lot. Here's a double team out front. Mercer takes the jumper. Delk follows. A push. Yeah. A push from behind. Tony Delk didn't need to do it to get that rebound. For Delk, his first. I don't really see a flow in this game yet, Jim. Here we are. Yeah, you don't really have a good sense of it, do you? Ten minute mark. We've got a very close game, obviously, one point differential, but I don't think either team has settled into a pattern yet. Mercer just pick his pocket ahead. McCarty. Wow. He had Camby on his right shoulder, but uh, Mercer stopping that move. Mercer showed a lot of explosiveness there on the defensive end of the floor. He expected from him offensively, but. And another good play. Throws it away. 
I don't like Padilla too much. Looks like John Calipari wants his 20, and this is going to be one where he gets in their face. Just a 20. Jim, I don't know if there's any young coach that's built the program from where he took it over to where he has it right now. Five straight championships in the Atlantic 10. Regular season, as well as conference tournament championships. It's only done once before by the great Everett Case at MC State down at the Southern Conference. But an incredible job by this guy. He took over a program in 1988 that had suffered through 10 straight losing seasons. Do you think that Rick Pitino wishes he had kept that $5,000 in his pocket that he used to supplement his salary? Pitino, of course, on the board, a well-known story, on the board that helps select the coach. And he really is a guy that John owes his job to. Well, you can't have Camby block the shots and get the rebound, too. Nobody there to help. Press is having its effect when the ball is not in Padilla's hands. You notice that? Whenever he's got it, Something good happens. The rest of the guys are very frenetic out here. And Delp realizes that too, so Tony with his experience trying to keep him occupied. Padilla looking for that screen. He goes away from it. Good dish. Kimby. One shot. Rattles out. Sandy tips it up. Almost. McCarty comes barreling out of there. Kentucky running again. McCarty all the time out as he was Did he get out of bounds. McCarty kind of, he's a guy that can put the ball on the floor, Jim, but he kind of lost concentration going down that sidelines. You well, know, he signaled for the timeout. They said he was out of bounds first. Better off probably not getting it. I wouldn't want to burn one yeah, this early. No, not, not at this stage. Here he goes in the air. Hey, legally, it was a timeout that he should have got. He was in the air, has the right to call it. His foot had not touched the line. Yeso has got to get in this game offensively, Jim. He hasn't been a factor yet. Padilla three. One ready to shoot. Good clear out by Kentucky. Well, Kentucky explodes from offense to defense and vice versa, don't they? And big blocks. And UMass ball off Walker. Travieso has made only, well, one shot. It's only taken one. Derek Anderson comes back in for the Wildcats. Mercer, the freshman, very active. Hit one shot while he was in there. McCarty out again. And, Jim, this team cannot afford to have Travieso not have a good offensive game. He had 20 against Georgetown. He had 21 against Central Florida, 14 against Arkansas, and 14 against Stanford. They have got to have production out of that young man. He's not going to be asked to handle the ball that much against the press, but he's got to finish at the end. Padilla got stuck and almost taken away by an alert Epps. You don't want to get up in the air in the backcourt to make a pass. UMass has gone almost four minutes with but one field goal. Give and go to Dingle. Anderson coming from the weak side, got him before he could come down. I like that offensive set, though, by Massachusetts with a high screen and then kicking the ball back over so Camby can set up down low. It's one way they can get him down there without the double team. Two on Anderson. Now and Edwards comes in for the first time. With Anderson's two whistles. He sits. Jim Padilla bending over, grabbing those shorts. We've got eight minutes to go in this half. That young man's really been extended. They've already set up Camby for nine field goal attempts. He's made three of them. Well, he's had games where maybe you get him quiet for a while, then he explodes. Right. Good shot up and over Walker. Five for Bright. Bright had a 17.7 rebound game against Georgetown, so he's very capable. Delt jumper. Just a pure score. Hunt. Can't shoot it any nicer than that. Six 
7.30 to go in the first half. And what looked like it might be a real fast pace, high scoring first half has kind of settled down now a little bit. See, how many different men, how many different men has Rick Pitino put on Padilla today? Yeah. You know, well, just brought in Edwards and he collects a foul. That's the fourth man that's guarded him so far in this half. Padilla has six assists. Wright scored on that one. It looks like straight man-to-man -man pressure with Mercer on Padilla, but watch it what happens when he reels to come up court. You're going to see pressure coming from three different directions. Kentucky takes their defense and turns it into offense. Here comes the three men in the trap. Mercer with the steal. McCarty gets it. Even Camby can't block that one. Kentucky leading 23-20 with 7.22 to go in the first half. UMass has attempted only one three-pointer. Jim, I think you got to set Travieso up for some kind of way to get Ooh. off some shots here in this first half. He has really been shut down by Delp. See if they have anything in mind for him. Here he comes off the screen. Too late. Right turnaround, too strong. Camby's on the line. They'll bring in Weeks. I really think that John Calipari on that particular time down court had in mind something for Traviesa. I realize that Bright was open in the low post, but you know where he's sitting right now, don't you? Over on the bench. Weeks is in there. Walker the great passer. Scores off the pass from Walker. Well, how nice it is to have a six foot eight man that can pass the ball. He's on the line, the turnover. I really think Walker's developed into the best passing big man in college basketball. Makes him so tough. And he can do other things. He can do a lot. I'll tell you, you're looking at a first team All-America perhaps next year. Delp, he traveled. Yep. Well, Trevieso showed us against Allen Iverson that he can guard anybody and he sure did the job on Tony Delk there. Stopped him on three occasions on one attempt to penetrate. So UMass down five. It's largest deficit of this NCAA tournament. There was straight man-to-man -man pressure. Kentucky drops on back. Oh, oh, got that steal. No call. He reached in. Forced it. Delk underneath. They have a chance to go up a second time today that Tony Delk has finished off on the inside. He is an excellent finisher, whether it be on the break or on the drive. Terrific play by Tony Delk. X comes down floor, almost loses it, makes a good decision, and then there's Delk with that ability to finish, puts it up with a left hand. Two times the leading score in the state of... Tennessee came board on board of Kentucky primarily as a scorer. Jim, I know he has great stats this year, but in my estimation, this young man's leadership is what separated Kentucky from the field during the course of the regular season. I mean, he, he realized early on it had to be the team before self, and he's the guy that set the stage. And you've got a, your best player being your best leader. That's a terrific accomplishment. Dingle with a, a cut lip with two fouls. So an official timeout. Monday night, Syracuse, Jim Beheim. I was talking to him after the game, Billy, about 33 years there as a player, assistant coach, and the last 20 of the 33 years as head coach, looking for that championship to take home. Jim, we're always looking for stories, you know, but Jimmy Beheim's attitude, and I realize his personality is so much different from Jim Valvano's is the way, you know, they basically act. But, you know, they both remind me of two guys that, in talking to Jimmy Valvano back in 83 and Jim Beheim here, like, hey, what am I doing here? You know, I'm having a good time. I mean, <laughs> everything's a bonus in life. I mean, it's, uh, it's incredible how similar they are, even though they have different personalities. 
Jim Beheim says in 25 years, only twice has he forgotten to book a hotel at the <laughs> Final Four. Good One example. year was 87 because I didn't want to go, and he ends up qualifying for the Final Four, getting all the way to the title. And then this year, he forgot. <laughs> and here he is, well, a game away from the title. He was sure somebody from the Big East was going to be here. He just didn't know it was going to be Syracuse. <laughs> and that pressure really taken Massachusetts out of their offense early on here. They have not been able to get the ball where they want it. Javieso had not been able to even get a shot. Oh, hammered. Javieso has been just locked down. And that's called on Allen Edwards, his second. Well, we're talking about a Massachusetts team that got to the line this year. 899 times coming into this basketball game. They do that because can be such a factor inside. There we see Dingle leaving the floor. Probably is going to have to get the, some work on that cut. Tough break for Massachusetts. That shortens up that bench an awful lot. And this man will have to be called on a little bit more. Tyrone Weeks out of Philadelphia. Always viewed Hank Gather as a mentor back in that neighborhood. Gather used to bring him back some of his sneakers. Pass it on to the kids in the neighborhood. Hank Gather uh, gathers a big uh, hero back in Philadelphia, still to this day. We don't forget. Oh. Travel. They've got him again on that call. Yeah, yeah there he goes with that ju steps, jump stop. Now, Rick Pitino's going to say, hey, wait a second. We work on that. He's over there talking. We work on that in practice. That was a Hank Nichols perfect display of what is traveling on that play that he gives to the officials before the season starts. That will be in his reel next year, I can assure you. Does Travieso have blood on his arm, Jim, or is that just like a pencil mark? You see it there? Big red welt on his arm. I'm looking for it. It's on his left arm. They're already here down with Dingle down with a cut. Sure can't afford that. Padilla, rather. Padilla to inbound. Okay. Watch out, he better not move too much. The official looked down to see if he moved that he, second foot. He got stuck almost like anchored in cement down yeah. there. There it is, uh, that's Padilla's arm, see that? So uh, it looks like a scratch. Twenty-eight, twenty-one Wildcats approaching five minute mark, first half. So far, Kentucky has taken Massachusetts out of what they want to run half court. Padilla wildly threw that one up, got it back somehow. And he'll go to the line for a couple. Just created a shot and a good lesson for young players. Sometimes when you're down in low like that as a small man, don't try to make the shot as much as you're trying to get fouled. Excellent move. Shepard's second will send Edgar Padilla to the line, Shepard to the bench. Padilla, an outstanding player in Massachusetts on a high school level at Spring in Springfield. But was kind of overshadowed by the exploits of Travis Best there and left Springfield after his junior year. Went back to Puerto Rico and of course then was recruited out of that back to Massachusetts. Padilla and Travioso hoping to play for Puerto Rico in the Olympics this summer. have an excellent basketball team. So their addition uh, obviously will be very prominent, but uh, believe me, Puerto Rico will be well represented without them if they fail to make it. Travieso, by Delt, but into the arms of Weeks. What was that? Travieso, Camby, flings it into the air, and Bright reached in for the foul. Jim, that reminded me of what we saw Mississippi State do in the first game. Make plays that weren't there, causing a lot of turnovers. Travieso may be getting a little frustrated. He can't get anything started. Second on Bright. And now they bring in Wayne Turner out of Boston. 
And Travieso on the year, Jim, at 102 threes. It's a new Atlantic 10 record. So you're looking at a young guy right now that uh, John Calipari needs to get open somehow with 434 to go in this first half. Kentucky has done a great job on him with their defense. Well, he made 18 threes alone in the first four games of this tournament. Now they've got a chance to break as Travieso explodes out. Followed up by Wright. 28-24. Wright has been picking this team up with an excellent first half. Now the UMass fans, a good pass. Turner got the roll. Walker with the pass and assist. Excellent back screen there. There's Mercer, who did a pretty good job with defense that press when he was in there before. Two freshmen on the floor now for Kentucky. Turner and Mercer. Turner manning the ball right now. There's the double team. Nice hit. Bright to the hole. Lays it in. Brilliant play by Marcus Camby. He felt the double team coming, got rid of the ball immediately. Mercer stepped to the hole. Mercer had the big game, Jim. Coming off the bench with very productive minutes. You can almost see that one coming. 3.30 remaining, first half. Delt with 10, Kentucky up six. Well, the report is Dana Dingle has been given two stitches to that bloody clip, and we expect him to return. Delt, the leading scorer with 10 points, can be credited with three blocks, five rebounds, seven points. Jim, but the stat that jumps out to me is UMass five points out of their backcourt. And I really think that that's an absolute key for them in the next three minutes is to get Travieso a shot some way so that he can get his stroke going before he goes in at halftime and starts thinking about it. Brought in a new player for UMass, number 44. And there he is, almost turning it over, Nunez. Rigoberto Nunez for UMass. All his job is to go out there and set some screens. Tony Delp down on Travieso, and he really is keeping an eye on him. Double high screen. Camby over the top, weak, beautiful. Camby, hard effort, but no points. Look at Walker handle that ball in the open court. He can really do that. Delp over three. Travieso, good hustle to get that rebound off the floor. Beat Turner to the ball. That was a Kentucky horse race for that one, wasn't it? Two guys going. Kind of like Cigar the other day, huh? Going for that ball. Well, Campy, outside they call it. You know, Rick Patino had a horse running earlier today. Mr. Is that right? Tyler ran at Turfway Park. And what happened? Finished third. About that. He's not looking that, for any third that, place that finish. May be, that may be good. A show? What is that? A show? That's is that a place? That's, that's the show. The show? He doesn't want any show here. He wants a guy at the wire. Pope sits with his first. You missed the third place game at the Final Four? <laughs> no, I, I, I really think that that's something that uh, should have been done away with a long time ago. You remember when it was done away with, the last one? 1981. 1981. Yeah, 1981. in Philadelphia. Yep. LSU was uh, down there against Virginia in the, in the third place game. Clark yeah. comes back in. That was the Final Four in which President Reagan was shot. And uh, very trying game for us there for a while. Coming up on Penn's on at the half, Pat Quinn, Coach K, Coach Herrick, George, all the first half analysis, plus Jim Beheim will be joining them. Mercer trying to post up down low. Turner, two-point shot. There's a push by Dell, he got away with it. Look at that hold on Mercer, called on Mercer. But see, this is one team, Jim, that can't get into foul trouble. You know, Rick Pitino, really is. Yeah, I mean, how do you get in foul trouble when you can look down that bench, 12 deep quality players? So Jim Beheim will get more comments from the coach who won the first game here today, 77-69. His team committed only five turnovers, got a big second half from Todd Bergen. And Jim, when you think of great semifinal games, I think back of Kentucky Duke. 
Adolph Rupp's club sitting over in that other wing with Utah and, and sitting over there with Texas Western. Everybody wondering about the Kentucky Duke. Who's going to win that one? They'll, they'll be the national champion. Ago. Yep, 30, 30 years, years ago, ago 1966. Year. Kentucky won the game, went to the final, and Don Haskins' club beat Adolph Rupp's club. Thirty-two, twenty-eight, two, ten. Remaining first half. One four offense is set, trying to post up Delk inside. Boy, Clark is giving him a lot of hand-to-hand -hand combat. Walker's got Canby away from the basket. Walker. Nice pass. And that was just a two. Nice passing by Turner and Walker together. Seven for Walker. Not have really been a first half of spurts like the first time they play when UMass led by 19 at 29-10, only to see Kentucky come back and tie it at the intermission. See, there's the double team. Weeks has got to anticipate the double team throw before he catches the ball. Camby would have been wide open for an easy shot. Fischel, who admits he never saw it, they so they look at the arrow and it belongs to Kentucky. We'll see the replay. Now watch, when that ball comes in, here's the double team. You have got to be ready to pass this minute that you touch the ball, throw the ball opposite from where the double team man came. Looked like McCarty kind of hiked it out of bounds. John Calipari trying to get a nice little discussion going. Both coaches handling themselves very well on the sideline. These two met in the Sweet 16, these two coaches, two teams, 1992. It was the uh, prelude to the Kentucky Duke game in a regional final, speaking of Kentucky Duke games. Set up one of the greatest. The interesting thing in that game is that Calipari got called for a technical for being out of the coach's box. You remember that, Billy? Yes, I do. Pivotal point in that game. We were watching that down in Lexington, weren't we? We were. Yep. Getting ready for the uh, Southeast Regional, where the Fab Five came out of. We had Camby Walker. Walker thinks he can take on the dribble and does. Camby, though, just hammers that one out of bounds. Four on the shot clock. Now, let's see how well Kentucky recognized And Look at this, a neat move by Patino. Real quick, he gets Epps in the game, realizing Epps is his best decision maker, so he brings him in there with a four-second situation. Plus, he gets the time to stop a little bit so his team can get organized. A very clever move. leans in. And did that pay off? Got a Terrific piece of coaching there. 36-28. Nobody coming to the ball. Now Clark does. 40 seconds to go in the half. Well, Jim, one thing didn't happen that I thought had to happen for Massachusetts, and that is Travieso had to be out there getting off. He didn't do it in the first half. Walker. Telegraph pass. 20 seconds to go. You know, the last two final fours we've had buzzer beaters at the half. Yeah. Damon Stottlemyer did it two years ago, and then Dwight Stewart with the half-court heave last year. I don't see if we can get one here. I don't think Kentucky's going to let Massachusetts have a chance at one of those. Let's see if they can make one, though, to beat the buzzer. Well, they won't throw a bomb, will they? They'll get it inside. <laughs> There's Camby's fire. Jim, I was, I was rooting for you. I was rooting for you. That would have been the all-time call. You, you were halfway out of your chair. All right, the eight-point lead ties Kentucky's largest lead of the half. And the score, Kentucky 36, Massachusetts 28. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship will continue after this message and a word from your local station. And Jim, the start of this second half, I think it's absolutely critical for Massachusetts to get in their half-court set Get Travieso off with some kind of a jump shot. They've got Dingle back now. He had to go out and get that lip uh, stitched up. But they've got to get a secondary score moving and moving early. Dingle really uh, had to sit out eight minutes of that first half with the two stitches being applied. They got the switch. Walker on Travieso. Canby splits the defender's foul call on Epps. That was a triple down. Anderson, <laughs> Epps, and McCarty, who was originally set up on Canby. Right, 
wanting the challenge. Anderson takes it to the paint. And McCarty comes out of there with it. He should have numbers if he can hit ahead quickly. You see Delft rubbing off McCarty. Anderson posting up on Bright. And the pass in there from McCarty. It was, Anderson's first two. There was so much concentration on what was going on on the strong side of the floor that the weak side was open. Double-digit lead for Kentucky. In Massachusetts, when they have a double-digit lead, they never give it up. They've never lost a game where they get a double-digit lead, but they find themselves the reverse now. How about that play by Walker? He's doing it all. He leads Kentucky in assists also. Epps trying to get it inside to Anderson. They'll reset. Walker was the man that called the team into a closed-door session after that Massachusetts game and said, guys, we got to start pulling together here. Travieso will pick up his third. Terrific offensive play. Now here's the strong side of the floor. See where the ball is? All the activity defensively seemed to be concentrating there. And that gave Anderson a chance to come around from the weak side, be wide open one-on-one -on -one down low, even against a bigger man, Bright, who couldn't stop him. So he has three now, does Travieso. Unable to get started offensively here. Held to only two points. You see Delt rolling around with McCarty and breaking inside. Stop that pass. Delt almost had a three-point opportunity. Is that his fourth, Jim? Traviesos? It's a back screen. Beautiful two-man game. Is number four right here. That was the back screen on Travieso. Delk, who has been a great ability to put it away on the inside. And now a tough, tough break for Massachusetts. Clark has to come in for him. Out with four at the 1825 mark of the second half. Now we're talking about two different worlds now, Jim. We're talking about one of your biggest uh, offensive players. Oh, absolutely. Clark coming in, averaging about a point a game. 1.3 points per game coming into the ball game. And you've got almost 13 going out. He picked up two fouls there in a 13-second span. McCarty, they say Weeks had him with the arm. I thought he had the block. So did I. Yeah. I, let's see the call here. Maybe before the play. Well, we were blocked out by all the players there. Epps. And that's goaltending. That can be right underneath the basket. Everything going wrong for Massachusetts at this point. Kentucky sensing the kill here. Yep, up 13, largest lead. Boy, they won't take that pressure off. Keep the dribble alive. The one man that doesn't catch it well in traffic, Jim. Epps yep, snaps it inside. Anderson on the far side, and he's hammered. Well, wow. line for two. Padilla just went in there to rake him. There's got to be a timeout here for Massachusetts game getting away from him. This is how quick it can happen, too. You know, Kentucky's come out, scored the first five points of the second half. Jim, we're looking at a team in Massachusetts. 26 and 0 on the road this year. When you look at some of the things that they have done, they've stopped winning streaks of teams that were undefeated five different times this year. This ball club, though, in serious trouble. Key scorer on the bench with four fouls. It's not like you come back 15 down from Kentucky every day. Absolutely. Look at this. Oh, McCarty got a fingertip on it, so UMass retains possession. Otherwise, we were looking for a highlight. Rick Pitino now up, even more visible than he was before. He knows that the knockout punch is potentially there. Here comes the trap. A little too close, Delk pushing off. Well, and that's his second. Noticed in the first ball game, Jim hand checking was called very closely, and there you see it again. Not that that was not a foul, but it's a quick one.
Gambe swarmed. Dingle inside. Boy, that was a hard earn two. It sure was. But again, can be recognizing that double team and getting rid of that ball. That was UMass's first scoring of the second half. Travel. And Rick Petito doesn't like what he sees, and now he'll take his 20-second timeout. Cardi recognized they wanted to go to Camby. Dingle lucky to get that ball back. No one, no one, no one. And the Kentucky player touched it last, they say. If you watch Kentucky, if you ever get a chance to watch Kentucky practice, you will see how fundamentally sound they are on that double down. McCarty anticipates the pass. That's why they get there so quickly against the man in the post. Oh, they found Bryant Wilder, but someone lost him. Little back screen cut. John Calipari out of that coaching box and is warned to get back in it. Boy, that would be a very upsetting technical. Cold called on Clark. Well, Clark can give the defensive minutes because he's so strong down there playing against Tony Dell. The problem is he can't give the offensive minutes that Travieso would be able to, with, who's sitting on the bench now with four fouls. What did he pick those up, Jim, with about 18 minutes to go? 18-25. Yeah. And he had those two in a 13 second span three and four. Oh, Walker missed a layup. Kentucky ran an out-of-bounds play similar to Massachusetts. And Clark saved two. Hey, Clark's banging some guys around in there. He's got fresh legs. Clark came on at the end of the year for this UMass team. Of course, he was out for with that operation of his right foot. He broke his uh, foot in the Kentucky game. Missed 14 games after that. Oh, Tony Dell with a little string music. Beautiful extension on the jump shot by Delk. He's well guarded. Use it Dingle to beat the press. But they don't have a finisher. They don't have a finishing shooter. Well, there's Clark penetrating for two. He's given some big minutes here. Young man from New York City. St. Raymond's high. McCarty against maybe the best shot blocker along with Tim Duncan in college basketball, still gets it off. That wriggles free from Camby. 47-34, approaching 16 minutes. Clark, feeling confident, steps in. Oh, oh. Camby, good night. Getting some better shots here. Clark holding his fist up as if he wants to come out and take a breather. You notice this, but he can't get a breather. Don't have There's nobody right. to put in. And no, no, John Calip Travieso got up off the bench. Calipari said, I can't go with him. We're going to look at bringing in Goodell Padilla, Edgar's older brother, tie up, and the arrow belongs to UMass. We reach an official's timeout. Look where Calipari is. He's all the way down in front of the Kentucky bench. He's got to get his club back. Final four action here at the Meadowlands. Goodell Padilla. Older brother of Edgar now into the game. They have Travieso on the bench with four fouls. Jim, he got up. He thought he was going in. John Calipari grabbed him by the shirt and said, no, no. Got to save you as long as I can. Rejected by Edwards. I love this man's enthusiasm, though, John Calipari. Look at this. <laughs> he is not coming down to coach Kentucky. He's going down to get his club. That's kind of being out of the coaching box. Just uh, a little bit. Obviously, you can be on the floor, but... John went all the way down to see his friend Rick Patino on that one. There's the double on Camby, even though he's outside. Dwindle takes advantage in a 15-point lead as Dwindle to nine. Tough knocking out a number one team, isn't it? These guys are used to winning. They don't want to be put away. Rick Patino tried to go for the knockout, and it just wasn't there. Del Padilla comes in to help out, and they call a push-off foul on Mark Pope. Well, Padilla was just trying to get the out-of-bounds call. He ended up getting a foul call. I, I think at first he thought he was going to be whistled for it. Yeah. Here we see it inside. Padilla goes down on the inside. Well, I really didn't see a foul there on Pope at all. But the call was made. Derek Anderson back in for Kentucky. 
And Walker also returns. Give John Calipari a lot of credit, Jim. He is juicing up this ball club on that sideline. A lot of emotion over there coming out of him. And his team is responding. Always good to throw that ball back against that press. Nice job by Massachusetts. Walker anticipating the pass down inside. Look at this spin move. To Kirby and Ron. And that wasn't Edgar, that was Goodell. And Jim, <laughs> he took off like he knew exactly what he wanted to accomplish. What a great story. The Padilla brothers in the backcourt. Gamby has a chance to bring this one in six. We're talking about a young man that has played in 20 games, 34 minutes total for the year, and coming off the bench like he belongs out here. Terrific pass. He is the one who introduced basketball to his kid brother. Edgar was a baseball player. He said, I want you to try this. And they are really something special, these two. The parents here, the parents are deaf. There's Mr. Padilla right there. They said when they came to this country, they spoke two languages, Spanish and sign language. And uh, of course now doing so well together at the University of Massachusetts. Edgar was talking about how much he idolizes his older brother. Gave him a Valentine's Day card just to tell him I love him. And he is absolutely fired up. Guarding Dell. Inside, too strong. The UMass rebound out to Camby. Oh, smart play by Marcus to pull up. Nothing there. Too important a possession to try to make the great play. Looking to swing the ball back over to him. Walker doesn't bite on it. Ten on the shot clock. White Walker's on Dingle. He understands where Camby is. Now watch him anticipate the double team if they go that way. Goodell quickly inside. One on the shot clock. Oh, great. Had a chance at a layup. You know what happened to him, Jim? He was looking at the shot yep. clock That's as right. opposed to catching the ball. Tough play. John Calipari would like to have that possession back. 13-37 remaining. Six-point Kentucky lead. There's Delk posting up on Padilla down inside. Delk rejected by Camby. Now called. Padilla Goddell called on, him. yep, Goodell Padilla. When you take a look at Marcus Camby's career, freshman, 105 blocks. Sophomore year, 103. And then this year, he comes in with 122. You see Marcus Camby. Look at that timing. Terrific shot blocker. A party in for Kentucky. Jim, you know, when you talk about his, his blocking, I, I thought it was really interesting. There have only been four guys who have blocked over 300 shots in college basketball in their, up to their junior year. Timmy Duncan, we got two of them playing, Timmy Duncan and Marcus Camby. And then Shaquille O'Neal. And then the last guy was Rodney Blake of St. Joe's. That really surprised me. Well, Traviasso has come back in, Billy. And Goodell Padilla goes out to a warm welcome from his teammates. And two misses by Dell. Traviasso on the floor with the four fouls. He set out for five minutes. Nice pass. Right. Can't be trying to tip it in. Empty trip. Two shots that Wright normally could have put away. Walker. Boy, they are really intense out here. Campy was so high. But John Buddy might goaltend it for a minute, but didn't get a finger on it. Now they've had two straight empty trips. Make it three. How much energy can they expend in the comeback to have anything left if they ever get there? Three pointer. Those are killer shots. Calipari got great play from Padilla, great play from Clark. Now this man right here has got to give him something along with his running mate in the backcourt. But 
Epps just won't let Travieso get, he's almost like in his shirt. Just hadn't been able to get a shot. Right, and Travis, and UMass trying to continue that comeback, but that's four straight possessions without a point. Jim, sometimes you get so tired after making an exhaustive run like that, you just can't get it going. Dell. And Dingle. Boy, McCarty almost ripped it away. Dingle did a good job to hold on to it. The ball came up so high off the rim that Dingle had to wait on it. Anderson sitting down on defense. Can be outside. Not what Mass needed on that possession. And look what happens as a result. McCarty. <laughs> Big mistake by Marcus Canby there, Jim, because he took a shot out of his range, so nobody was ready to rebound. They're calling a 20-second timeout. Do they have one? They are, I thought they took it in the second half. They already took their 20, didn't they? Don't have it. So it's a full timeout, and we'll be right back. When the wrong man shoots from the wrong place, something bad happens. Here you see Camby put it up. He's not used to going there. He goes inside, no chance for a rebound. McCarty off and running an easy two for Kentucky. And Kentucky is sending some people over. That was scheduled to be the next dead ball, was supposed to be a TV timeout, but UMass called the 20, didn't have it, so they had to take a full. And Hold on. Boy, turn it over. Jim, talk about three things going That's wrong. Bad a bad shot leads to a play. Then you call a timeout thinking you have a 20, which you don't have. And then you get the ball taken away on a possession on that outbounds. Three big turnovers. Well, they got it down to six. They had a bunch of chances. Trepieso playing like he doesn't have any fouls on him. There's another reach in. He's got to be real careful here. Padilla, rather. That was the two, both Padillas in there. I look at one down on one end of the floor. Didn't realize it. It took Travieso out. They've got Clark to bring him back in as well. Nice movement by Kentucky. Got Walker alone. Walker with a slam. Such a versatile player. We saw John Wallace in the first game, very similar. And a hold on Anderson. Here we see Walker down inside. Dingle gets, tries to go up on top defensively, but he's sealed off and can't do it. Nice job. Boy, in the revolving door. Here comes Mercer in with fresh legs. That can be also comes back in. In for weeks. Mercer for Kentucky. So DM look out, they were setting up for it. One, one call is a travel, and that's what will stick. Well, it was going to be a charge, but then it became a walk. Padilla comes off the screen, heads up court. Epps is waiting on him. 54-41, Wildcats, 10-48 remaining. Walker is open on the baseline for a moment. Delton put that ball right out for Padilla to take it. Couldn't get his hands quick enough. Walker challenging Camby to the hole. Tough assignment, isn't it? Camby pretty quick out there. Padilla was looking for the lob pass. Jumper. Dana Dingle. He has eight points. 54-43, halfway through the second half. Jim, Massachusetts probably has time for one more big run, but do they have the energy? Walker trying to, he's throwing inside and Weeks picked it off. Walker patted himself on the head, say, start thinking out there. And he's been making good judgments today. And right on the back, Walker is going to be whistled for that one. Weeks with a wide body, you can't get around him. That's the sixth team foul 
on Kentucky. Right back in, and Travieso also returns. Mark Pope for Kentucky. And the key right now, if they're going to make a run, you're waiting for Travieso to open up. Epps on Padilla. Delk on Travieso. Delk is right there with him. You know how aware Kentucky is whenever he moves. He's got a Kentucky player with him. Party went for the steal, recovers nicely. They've got Travieso open, three-pointer at last. And that's for UMass, its first three-pointer of the game. It's a key, Jim. Got to get him off the snide. Epps driving, blocked by Camby. Into the arms of Travieso. There was a little bit of fumble, and that's what made Tony Delk have to get out of position slightly, giving up just enough room for Travieso to become Travieso. There's his three. It's been a long time coming, Jim. His trademark, his 19th three of the tournament. Eight-point margin here for the Wildcats with 8.48 remaining. The winner plays Syracuse Monday night for the national championship. Mercer to the hole. Well, this freshman has matured today, right before our eyes. I mean, he's had a strong close to the season. Brought along nicely, trying to so. Epps couldn't get there in time that time. That was a quick release. 56-49. Jim, remember, he has four fouls on him, so he can only play about half speed on the defensive end of the floor here. Edgar Padilla bumped Dell. And that will put him on the line for a one and one. Oh, if you're the seventh. If you're Massachusetts, you like to play good hard-nosed defense, but you would rather have him on the floor not playing with such intensity defensively in order to have his shot available. Camby keeps shuttling in and out. Padilla's third foul. And Delco put up two misses on his last trip to the line. We'll shoot a one-on-one. And they've missed them all the same. Well, the trying to get loose again, but Epps is with it. Right, to Camby and out of bounds. Got the probably should have shot that ball. Just when you feel UMass is close to getting it right within range there's a turnover or an empty trip and Shepard is back into the Kentucky lineup for Epps now Jim the last four national champs were number one seeds plus the number one team in the country has been three out of the last four national champs coming into this tournament one is threatened right now party bypass to three to set up Mercer Ron Mercer. How deep is that bench? Arguably the number one high school player in America last year with Devin Garnett. He's having a great game. He tried to convince the official he never touched it. But he did, and it's UMass ball. So Mercer with nine. Really stroking it here in the second half. All right, Billy, here's a game summary. Jim Nance, Billy Packer back at the Meadowlands. Padilla, Travieso with 11 points together. Camby has now set an NCAA record for most blocks. Beating Tim yeah. Duncan. Duncan only played in four games. It's a career number. And last year, of course, got to play in, uh, let's see, what did they get, in three last year? Yep. Wake Forest came right here to the East Regional with the Meadowlands. Travieso, he's hit a couple of threes. Trying to get that into Camby, but the quick hands of Delk knocked it out. Delk realized that he had been beaten on a screen, so fell back down inside to pick up the anticipated pass. Yeah, got a little lucky, he got stuck. And it's 
Shepard knocks it out of bounds. Shepard, a seven foot high jumper. Really up in the air on that one. Almost blocked that with his elbow. He's going to shoot it, then pass it, and then they just tried to shoot it and got knocked out of bounds. So they retained possession. Down 10, 7.15 to go. Five on the shot clock. They may not be aware of it. Two on the shot clock. Padilla points for the pass shot. The shot can be the way. He runs into the shot clock. That's a walk. No call. Unbelievable. Delk got away with that one. The official was blocked off on the call. Running away from the play. Both games have been beautifully officiated so far. First game was excellent. Delk. And knocked out by Dingle with 13 on the shot clock. Well, Delk got up in the air much as Padilla did on that yep. shot and had to pass it while he was up there. Marcus yes. can be on it. Jimmy Marcus came in that last turnaround jump shot. He's got that down as a patented move, doesn't he, when he's got room to operate. And John Calipari setting up outside the coaching box now. He better be careful. Delk again got stuck. And Padilla got a hand on it. Delk looks at the referee and said, hey, he's all over my elbow. Bright with Mercer on him. See if they can't post up Bright. A little bit more experienced. Canby, both behind him. Beautiful. And one. Turned away from the potential double team. Too late for anybody to get there. Epps is talking to McCarty, saying, how come you couldn't help? But he was too far away. This is a beautiful job by Marcus Canby. Fakes to the inside, then goes outside. Mercer on the move, can't get there. Terrific turnaround jump shot. See this head fake, head, ball, eyes, and then he takes it away with the drop step. Beautifully done. Gets Pope to commit his third. Camby has hit all five shots in the second half. And that free throw reduces the lead to 59-54. 15-point lead down to five as Shepard shuttles in. Said Camby, they're looking for revenge. We're looking for respect. Is it Cam? Violator. Yeah, he raised, raised his, hand. his hand. I don't know if that was too smart. Let that referee work oh, a little bit. That's his second. Any one of three guys could have been called for that when they were all around the traffic. A post an interesting guy. He led the Pac-10 in free throw shooting as a sophomore at Washington. Now he comes in here to Kentucky and nowhere near the same percentage free throw shooter that he was out there. 65% is Mark Pope. He was also the Pac-10 Freshman of the Year back in 1992. All right, shot 86% from the line at Washington. I think of this Kentucky team, two key transfers with Pope and Anderson out here. Seven-point lead, six-minute mark, and it's, it's a block. That could have been the fifth on Travieso. Huge no, call. You're not kidding. Anderson whistled for it instead. It'll be a one-and-one one at the other end. Does Anderson have his feet on the ground? The answer is absolutely no. Terrific call. That's the fourth on Anderson. He never had himself in a planted defensive position of which you can move off and stay with the dribbler, but he was never there in the first place. Mercer coming back in the game. Ron Mercer, returns to Ron Mercer, who wanted to come to Kentucky, didn't want to feel like he had to carry the load as a freshman. It was down to Tennessee or Kentucky, his final two choices. And that developmental process has certainly happened for him in his showing today. And there's Travieso's mother, Carmen. And Jim, you talk about Mercer coming into the game. What did he do against Wake Forest in the last encounter in the NCAA tournament? Six minutes, zero points. Today he comes in very productive, looking like he could play for anybody in the country, which he probably can. Nine points by Mercer in all. Five-point game 
Inside six minutes, 2-1-2, two, two, full court trap here by Massachusetts. Walker dishes Shepard for two. That was that patented Kentucky passing. And who's the man had the ball in his hands? Remember, Weeks couldn't handle it earlier. But you get it to Walker, and he can make something happen. Great to the press, does Padilla. Rejected by Pope. All Padilla was trying to do there is get that ball up in the glass because he had Camby open. Right. Dante Bright, such a solid performer. 14 for Bright. Mercer lost control of it. UMass now has a chance to get even closer. How about Camby, a look down inside if he can keep Walker occupied with Dingle. See, he's not guarding Dingle. That makes it tough. Dingle tipped up and in by Bright. Minute by minute, this team from UBass is showing the signs of making just an unbelievable comeback and a timeout call by Kentucky. It's a three-point game with 4.56 remaining. Rick Pitino talking to his Wildcats. What's he saying here, Billy? Well, Jim, this is not a replay from someday in practice. This is how they do it. It's just like a coach in a classroom. Very interesting to watch how he sits down, folds his leg, and goes through the messages. But right now, his team is facing somebody making a miraculous comeback. 15-point Kentucky's second-half lead is down to three. 63-60, 4.45 remaining outside. Bright call for the push. Nice clear-out move by Kentucky that time. Anderson with a tremendous dribble drive on a slower but stronger man. Anderson will shoot a one-and-one. One. The Ohio State transfer, former Mr. Kentucky basketball. You know, Jim, we, it's interesting. We talk about guys leaving early. The reason that this young man went to Ohio State in the first place is Jimmy Jackson left Ohio State early. He felt that was an opening for him. Off X. So the front end missed. Three to tie. Always nice to be able to throw it up in the air to Camby, isn't it? And Padilla hits across midcourt with a couple of seconds to spare. Stolen away. X. X will drive on Padilla. Got his hands in there. No foul. For the time. Wasn't ready. That wasn't close. No, it wasn't ready. Didn't need that shot at that time. Slashing. Anderson gives it up inside. A hack. Jim Travieso has to be cognizant of the time on the clock. You're down three, four minutes to go. You don't need the desperation three-point shot. I thought Mississippi State did a little bit too much of that in the first game. That looked like the final seconds exactly. kind of a shot. Maybe trying to 40 make up, seconds. Yeah, making up a lot of ground. Yeah. Shepard for Delt in the Kentucky lineup. And Pope, who hit two earlier, just minutes ago, will shoot a couple. Pretty clean there. Pope left Washington to transfer out of there when Lynn Nance was uh, let go as coach at the University of Washington. Had a great relationship with his coach. Didn't want to go for the change. Five point Kentucky lead. Two big ones by Pope. Massachusetts must get a good shot here. the way Rick Pitino has rotated man after man on Padilla all day, giving him a different look defensively. And Padilla's had to go just the whole way. Oh, he's a 40-minute man, isn't he? He counts on playing them all. Eight on the shot clock, can be outside. Now, what they're saying is that ball had no opportunity to go in, and that's why it was not called goaltending. It would become up short. A timeout there used by Kentucky.
Billy UMass wanted a goaltend call here. Well, the ball is on the downward flights, Jim, but see, it had no chance to go into the basket in the opinion of the official. That's why it's not goaltending. And look at Tony Dell. The one reason he's not on the floor right now, tremendous leg cramps. You know that Rick Pitino would like to have him out there. Kentucky down to one timeout. UMass, by the way, has all three at the 11. 33 mark when they tried to call a 20 and didn't have it they called it a TV timeout Walker to the line for two and, and that's a good one by Bright how about intentional no chance they said he was going for the basketball here we'll see what happened Massachusetts tried to go into the 2-2-1 full court pressure that let Walker wide open and a good hit ahead and Bright has four that's his fourth Antoine Walker to shoot two. Travieso and Bright now with four. Two key players in trouble. Bell still getting treatment. It's like an ice bag, right, Jim? Yep. A cramp. And Walker. Well, we start getting into those two possession games now. Six point lead. It's still a lot of time. They get it inside to Camby Sun. There comes the double team. He recognizes, but he can't get rid of it. And Pope ahead. Kentucky Shepherd for the slam. Marcus Camby could not get rid of the ball against that great double teaming defense by Kentucky. How effective. Sixty eight sixty and this time Pope called for the foul. Pope was down on that double team. That was a key one, Billy, on that last possession. Four on Pope. Well, Jim, if you watch Kentucky practice every day, they work on double teaming. And they not only go in there, they don't go in to chop with their hands. They go in to really body up on people and they're so quick anticipating the low post moves. This the one and one. Big roll there. Oh, we have a problem here between Bright and Walker. Official does a nice job separating them. 247 on the clock. For a minute, Calipari was going to bring in Goodell Padilla. Now he sends him in to the scorer's table. He'll come in on the next whistle. Stolen by Travieso. Bright. Bright. Call for the push off, and that's it for him. That's number five. A huge call as UMass had a chance inside to get it back to five. Jim Bright was just stronger that time than Shepard, and that's what created the foul. Big miss by Travieso, and Bright probably would have had an easy putback if he didn't get called for the foul. See the miss? And there he's being pushed, and of course he's just so strong in the upper body, he knocks Shepard to the floor. And you can see how disappointed the young man from Baltimore is. Yeah, he's a senior. He wants one more game. Doesn't look like we'll see Tony Delk again, huh? He's like a lot of standing up here on it for a minute, I think. 68-61. Syracuse against the winner of this one. Will it be Jim Beheim against one of his former assistants, Rick Patino? Legendary story about Patino on his way to on his honeymoon gets called by Beheim and Besides, basketball is, at that moment, more important. Jimmy reading some clips. There he is, all reading the newspaper, just relaxing. I'm yeah. concerned. Maybe picking out a good Broadway show to go to tomorrow. <laughs> what a job he's done. Shepard, a little break in the action there. And so we see Joanne Patino. UMass using all of its, a lot of time to replace the fouled out player. That wasn't a timeout we just witnessed. Shepard one of two, tipped out by Anderson smartly, and Kentucky keeps it. Walker, Dingle got it. 
69 61 235 on the clock. And there you that see Bright done. realizing that he could have had a putback if he wasn't quite so strong. Antoine Walker shooting two. Antoine Walker to shoot two. He started every game this season for Kentucky except the UMass game. That's right, Jim. Such a great all around player recruited out of Chicago. Matter of fact, he's going to have an opportunity to play against an old teammate potentially. I don't know if Donovan will get in the game, but possible. Donovan McNabb, the Syracuse two sport star, the quarterback of the Orangemen, a sub on the basketball team. They went to high school together with McNabb and Walker. Timeout call by UMass. Trouble uh, inbounding. Back to a 10 point bulge. Refuse to lose, he's been saying all season. We'll have to try to mount another charge here late. Jim Nance, Billy Packer, back here courtside. UMass with two timeouts to go. 63-60 at one point, Billy, and UMass had the ball. Travieso missed a three, but they're down 10 now. The Jim, two threes, the one that Camby took for the breakaway for McCarty, plus that shot that Travieso took. At that point in the game, they were not good shots. Now they've got to be thinking a little bit about three, however. It's an eight to one stretch for the Wildcats. Camby leaning in, good, good move there. Gets you 21 for the game. Great steal. Padilla stole it away, and Travieso is there to pick it up. His brother's underneath for two. Edgar to Goodell, timeout UMass. They cut it to six. Great, strong hands by Padilla. Four points in a hurry. Don't count them out yet. Sometimes UMass just can't get a timeout. Well, Jim, here you see Marcus can be trying to call a timeout. Padilla was trying to call a timeout. The referees ignored it, and then boom, here's the steal. Massachusetts gets another basket. Now, the ASO, remember, has four fouls. He can't be reaching in. Epps doubled up. They have to use the time as well. So. A timeout called by Kentucky. We'll be right back. Come on, Kentucky. All right, Kentucky just used its last timeout, and Billy UMass has won. Rather odd how they got to save one here in this half. It really was, Jim. They were looking for a 20-second timeout. They called it, and they did not get the 20 because they didn't have one left. Fortunately for them, the clock operator said that there was an official timeout, so they were not charged for the timeout that they actually called. Big break for Massachusetts potential. The official said they had to stop play because the net needed fixing. So that was right after a Kentucky slam. So UMass has one remaining. This man out of timeouts, but with a six point lead. And Tony Delk has not been able to return, Jim. Tough break for Kentucky. Losing their very experienced, outstanding player at this point in the game. Oh, Goodell Padilla reached in. And had there been a UMass player on that wing, could have been raced to the other end. 149 to go, 20 on the shot clock. Here now, comes. yep, Delk coming in. Oh, Rick Patino has seen enough. He wants him back in. Let's see if he can go, though. And they were really rubbing him down over there. Outside, no basket. Outside, a foul called on Walker. And the one thing Rick Patino does not want is for a foul on Camby that far away from the basket. It stops the clock, puts Camby on the line. Not what he wants. It's double bonus the rest of the way at both ends. So it's a two shot situation for Camby. Two shots. Bring it within four. And Jim, when you think about a team that plays pretty well in overtime, you, you, got think, UMass. you think about UMass. Pretty 11, well. 11 straight overtime wins. So John Calipari is probably wishing, just get me to a tie at the end of this thing. 71-67.
This Kentucky team that came to the Final Four by a margin of 28 points a game. Turns it over. Anderson dribbled it out of bounds. They fouled really Epps and Delph in the ball game, but Anderson, the one handling it, they like to have the ball in Epps' hands, and he hasn't been able to come back and get it. Give Padilla credit. The two Padilla brothers on the floor. How about Fidel Padilla being here with 1.30 to go? He's had some night here at the Meadowlands. Nice patience here. Camby, Pope on his back. Camby shot. Fidel Padilla gets it back. He's rejected. Anderson comes out of the pack. And a bump call on Edgar Padilla. Well, that was a nice play by Anderson. Had to put the ball out in front of him. We've got both Padilla brothers giving it all out here, don't we? Tremendous effort on their part. Those are that. Absolutely incredible effort off the bench. Remember, Bright has fouled out, so they've got nowhere to go there. Clark gave them some very valuable minutes on that first comeback they made against Kentucky. Again, double bonus, two for Anderson. Four on Edgar Padilla. Jim, it would put it back to one of those six point margins. That nice it throw. is. 109 remaining. Nice pass. Split the press. Edgar. Cuts the lead in half. Got a hard of a line and get. He jumped up in the air. He yes, wanted a timeout. No one saw it. Camby coming in. Camby got Pope on the way up. Four on Camby. Look at Padilla. Recognized what was behind him. Pulled up, took that jump shot. You're talking about a winner there. Foul is charged for number 21, Marcus Camby, his fourth personal foul. Camby did the right thing, put Pope back on that foul line. That would have been tough to block because Pope would have had a lot of momentum, would have been able to dunk on the play. So Camby with four, Edgar Padilla with four. Bright is over four, and Bright out with five. 52.4 seconds remaining. Kentucky nice. hitting its free throw. Yeah, pretty nice foul shooting by Kentucky. They look confident on that line. Don't want to foul here. Edgar launches another one. This one rattles out. Good block out by Pope on Camby that time. Long pass. Only Walker's down there. <laughs> Kentucky up seven. Ball. Now, Jim, the real problem, John Calipari probably ought to put in somebody to commit the foul here because he's got his key players in foul trouble. Bring a guy like Clark in just to commit a foul. They're not already dealt inbounds and scores. They inbounded to dealt for two more, and it's suddenly a nine point game. for the slam and there's the final timeout well they seem to hand the ball over for that inbound really quickly UMass wasn't ready and they had Delta alone for the easy basket really we've seen uh, a lot of heart out here today I know I want to sound Absolutely. cliche here but uh, refuse to lose has been the motto all season long for, for UMass Tra uh, yeah. Trademark of this basketball team, Jim, and a tremendous job by John Calipari and their squad. Of course, Lennox 10 champs, both regular season and in the postseason tournament, worked their way here, and they played a marvelous basketball game. I really didn't think that if they got behind, they could make these comebacks. You knew that Kentucky would have the wherewithal to do that, not only emotionally, but with the bench. But Massachusetts has been phenomenal to be able to come, there, come back after some large deficits, Kentucky. one of which I thought was a knockout blow by Kentucky early in this half. Yeah. John Calipari's wife, Ellen. Now, I'm a little girl asleep. They've got a third child on, on the way. 
Uh, here we have 21 seconds. Bill. I'm surprised John did not put a fouling team on the floor right now to commit an immediate foul because he's got some key players out there. It may be all over anyway, but got a foul right away. And there's two guys with four. Yeah. And that's it for Edgar see, Padilla. See, that was my point. You put two guys out there just at like weeks, put weeks in Clark, and they commit the foul, and you don't lose a good player. Edgar Padilla has fouled out with 12 assists, ties his career high. He almost made it the whole way through. 19 seconds remaining. Now you can see what his teammates think of that young man and what John thinks of him as well. Tremendous competitor. And Jeff Shepard to shoot two. One of the long line of players, state players of the year that Kentucky has. Shepard, who played a lot more minutes last year, but like all the rest of the members of this team, had to put aside individual for team goals. Hamby, player of the year in college basketball. So we didn't come here just to just to play one game, though. We're not happy just to be at the Final Four, but Billy, the two, the two schools at the Final Four for the first time, Mississippi State and UMass, both eliminated today. Hadn't had two first-timers since 1979. Goodell Padilla on the layup. Just 13 seconds remain. Object is here not to get fouled. Keep the ball moving. Well, it's going to be a Kentucky-Syracuse final. Rick Pitino will be in the championship game for the first time. A hug for the two men who are like brothers. Kentucky withstands the furious rally. Clutch free throw shooting at the end by Kentucky. At the place of critical minutes late without Tony Delt. Kentucky and Syracuse set for the championship game now Monday night. They played last year. They played February the 5th of 95 with Kentucky winning 77-71.